Historical figures overrated. I'm going with another Thomas, and I'm going with Thomas Jefferson. Yeah, I agree. Thomas Jefferson, man. Even though I am a UVA alum, a lot of a lot of his bad stuff is right is, on the line. <laughs> is overpowered in the history books. I agree. I actually had TJ as my most overrated historical figure too. I've got a, a long-standing beef with Thomas Jefferson. Uh, he he claims to have invented all this stuff that they found laying around Monticello. Mm-hmm. Bullshit. That's all bullshit. Mm-hmm. Yep. He, he says that he invented macaroni and cheese. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson claims that he invented mac and cheese. Quebec, Canada. I don't know what the what, what's the what's the state there? Manitoba. No, uh, Quebec is Quebec a is a state. Prov- Easy province. with the states. So we're gonna get to the, the <laughs> provinces <laughs> with you later. Quebec, Canada. Hello. Uh, what the fuck's going on up there, guys? You guys are fucking up the the a, the AC here, the air quality. Uh, it's like 167 here. I got an upper respiratory issue because there's smoke all around my house. Get control up there, guys. I thought you guys had smoke jumpers. All right? I stopped smoking cigarettes, and then Reed tells me being outside, it's like smoking three cigarettes. Dude, it really does feel that way. How does the air, how does the air quality thing work? So, like, it's, it, the other day I seen it was at 151, and then it was at 167. And the higher like, the worse. The higher the worse. So it should be, like, what, like zero? It should be, like, 50-something. We were in, like, the, we were in the 150s yesterday. And yeah. this morning I woke up. And the air quality was 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 worse at, at, at 9 a.m. than it was yesterday, so buckle up. When I looked off my balcony yesterday, I was like, man, it's really foggy outside. And my girl goes, I think that's pollution. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was like, and I was like, really? And then sure enough, in the group chat, I said something. And Reed was like, yeah, there's fires up in Canada. I thought it was you. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so that's my my uh, my hello. Uh my layup line, I'll just I'll just pick something at random here. Do that. No, you know what I'm gonna do? Why don't you quit by Eddie Harris? That thing's been a banger for me. There was a really good uh fi- I'm not a huge fish fan, but my buddy who's a big fish head sent me this playlist that they play at their concerts and I think that like Trey and those guys really like and mm-hmm. Eddie Harris, they had a whole bunch of Eddie Harris on there. So there's some great music on that playlist, but uh Eddie Harris, uh why don't you quit? Love the song. Um hey, Nate, quick math here for the guys in the studio first off congratulations again on your home run derby victory oh thank you am i the best pound for pound home run hitter out of us two because uh no if you could do that math real quick you only beat me by one but you got me by like maybe 40 pounds it doesn't matter how many pounds like when you do home run derbies do they do they care about how much these batters weigh no i'm just asking i know but like it's content you know yeah but it's not really that that good i mean if we if you really think about it do the math here guys i I got it he he's a better pound for pound hitter than you let's say let's say that he's 300 and you're 250 (laughs) just roughly he hit three home runs to your two, so yeah. that's 50% more. He'd have to weigh 300. <laughs> but that doesn't matter. We, still, we <laughs> still need to add if Fax had three more hits. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you, you Two softballs and a baseball. Thank so you, you're Reed. the better hitter and the bound, better Thank pound you, for pound hitter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I think so. I was just trying to praise you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I talked to Kyle this morning on FaceTime. Uh, the report from Kyle is uh, that the food in Italy has a higher floor than our Italian food, but mm. the same ceiling. Interesting. Now, I don't know if that's... Um, Oh, so the worst, their, our their worst, worst, their their worst is much better than our worst. Okay, okay, okay. I see. I wonder. He was looking pretty svelte. I saw uh, him on Twitter looking lean. Yeah, he does look good. I wanted to ask you, did you see Kyle's tweet the other day of his daily schedule? Yeah, I deal with 5 a.m. wake up on a farm in Tuscany, 5 to 6 a.m. meditate, 6 to 7 a.m. breakfast, then walk in the sun with wife and kids. Okay. He's milking We're already, cows from one to three. This is from Carnivore Aurelius's Twitter, okay? But Kyle's daily schedule there is probably like wake up, rip, sig. Um, find Scroll a golf through Twitter course. and Instagram. Scroll through Twitter and Instagram. Uh, rip another sig. Uh, visit the Coliseum. Visit the Coliseum in the afternoon again. Um, Think about how well he would have done as a gladiator. Exactly. He's having a great time out there. The one thing he wanted me to say, because I was talking to him about Baby Gronk. Do you guys know Baby Gronk? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Kyle wants to fade Baby Gronk. He doesn't think Baby Gronk's going to pan out. So 
So he was like, if I could bet on baby Gronk not panning out, I would do it. And I think that's a terrible mistake. I just saw the guy rizzing up Olivia Dune. Yeah, I might be with him on that. I don't you, know. You, I think he's he. I think, think he's, he's got the genetics. Nah, I think he's catching his his. I can't wait. Social the, media peak right now. Yeah, I can't wait for the 2040 Super Bowl when Baby Gronk gets the MVP and says, "Shout out Kyle. He never believed in me." Right. Exactly. And then there's also this Baby Diggs guy. There's a Baby Diggs guy, um, who's like a little Stephon Diggs. He's up in Buffalo. And these guys are on a collision course, so just keep your eye on that. And I see you say you think Baby Gronk over Baby Diggs, and I want to say that I think Baby Diggs will probably take Baby Gronk. Wow. Baby Gronk looks too much like a pretty boy to me. Okay. That's all I'm saying. Okay. So I want to take a second to um, to cover something. Okay, so I've had my back and forth with Tuanon. on. Um, I had my back and forth with the guy in the dolphin mask. The, the actual guy uh, with the two and on voice box and the whole thing. Uh, Eric Carmona, who was one of the founding members of two and on, passed away tragically um, in the last week and he leaves behind a, a beautiful family. Um, and um, his wife, Vanessa, um, he was a Navy veteran. He was a huge Miami Dolphins fan and he was wildly creative. Like I loved, even though I disagree with the whole premise of like, building a shrine to two, I love people getting into it. And it's really entertaining. And I thought he, he and the two and on people, um, you know, the guys with the masks, the guys running that account were among the best fan uh, accounts in the NFL. And um, I'm just really sorry to hear about it. And uh, there is a GoFundMe. We can share that in the podcast uh, notes. Uh, please consider supporting um, his, Eric's beautiful family. This guy was uh, a, a true football fan and really fucking funny. I never got to meet him in Temecula. Um, I told him I wanted to meet him in Temecula um, and we never got to meet. So um, yeah, man, rest in peace, Eric Carmona and uh, and send some love out to uh, the two and on folks. Uh, please donate if, if, you, if you can. Hey, listen, the gambling thing popped up in the NFL. We'll talk about it as, as um, details emerge. I think it's really interesting uh, because, you know, I don't think people realize a lot of the different rules that go into it. It's like, it's not cut and dry. Like if you're a coach or an executive or somebody working on the football staff, you can't bet, period. I see Miles Austin, right? He got suspended for a year and he wasn't betting on NFL games. Uh, but if you're an NFL player, there are all types of, you know, like little wrinkles in the rules. I mean, you can't bet at, you know, um, an NFL event, even if it's on another uh, sport, you can't do it in the locker room. Um, there's all types of little things that you kind of have to pay attention to. You could be on the team plane thinking, hey, I want to bet this NBA game. You can't do it. Wouldn't you just <clears throat> not bet anything rather than learn the rules? Like if you're making multi-million dollars a year, like you're a good player. In well, the NFL. I would just bet my teammates, you know, and not yeah. on the NFL, but on like whatever you want. I mean, right. there, there's a book right in there. If you want to bet $300 on a college football game, I go find Brandon Graham. Brandon Graham, my favorite guy to, to, to uh, you know, like when we'd be out to dinner and we'd be watching college football or something, like he doesn't believe in spreads. So yeah. I would just, I would say, you know, hey, do you like the dog in this matchup? And that UVA is never favored against Exactly. Syracuse. So he would always come up to me and I'd be like, let me get the points on Virginia. And he, but, you know, the, the point is, I mean, it's a lot like cannabis is like, the landscape is changing in cannabis and you see the way it's changed with the NFL is they can't say, Hey, cannabis is a okay. Cause it's a, you know, it's an issue with kind of the image and, and different state laws and that sort of thing. Um, but what they can do is raise the threshold greatly to avoid having this rash of NFL players every year suspended for smoking too close to the test. And that's what they've done. And I think eventually the NFL has to contend with, you know, like weighing out, like, are we protecting the integrity of the game or are we making the integrity of the game look shaky because these guys are getting suspended for betting the NBA or college football at the facility, albeit, but because they're confused by the rules or they're taking chances. And it makes the NFL look at first glance to somebody who's not digging in like we have a gambling problem. So I think the NFL is going to have to contend with that calculus and being like, hey, do we want to 
do we want to take it a little easier to avoid the uh, you know the forest fire here and and not having to put them out every year with like a Calvin Ridley um, or or you know even a Miles Austin or some of these guys that are supposedly getting suspended from Detroit um, or do we want to or do we want to go stat, you know business as usual and just teach the players the rules better? I mean I think that's the big question, but I think mar- marijuana and gambling are parallel um, issues for the NFL. And the Super Bowl is in Vegas. I know. So your, it's your just like stands. it's it's one of those things too. It's it's going to be tricky because you're going to have all these guys who don't make it to the Super Bowl, but you want to go and support your friends and colleagues yep. and be down there, and you don't realize you might be in one of these casinos and you might enter your name in some type of bet or drawing or whatever, and come to find out in a year you might end up on a list like, hey, he betted on this, so he can't play for six games or he can't play for eight games and that's a scary thing and don't get a bookie but there's no paper trail with a bookie <laughs> <laughs> the nfl is uh, also forcing gambling into the players consciousness consciousness like they're opening up all these books in the stadium fans are more aware of gambling. They're consumers. The media talks about gambling like it benefits the nfl to have gambling be robust they make money from it so like they just kind of need to make this big public relations stand to try to make everybody think that things are on the level, whether they are but or not. But you just I don't said know. a key thing, which is that, you know, the, the NFL, they're targeting fans, they're targeting gamblers, mm-hmm. um, sports fans, that, that, that's, those are NFL players. And, right. you know, like the collateral damage is, yeah, your marketing's pretty fucking good and guys are looking at these apps and they're, they're looking at odds and they're saying, hey, I want to get on that action. Mm-hmm. It's not the NFL. It's just they want to gamble. And I would be hella tempted to look at my own props. Like if I'm a running back, I'd love to know what, what, how many yards they think I'm going to get, how mm-hmm. many receptions they think mm-hmm. I'm going to get, you know? Yeah, yeah, motivation. You walk in the locker room like, fuck that. My over-under <laughs> is 27 and a half yards today. Nobody believes in me. <laughs> but, like, we never paid attention to props or any of that shit when I was in the league because gambling wasn't as much in the forefront. So um, interesting to, to watch that develop. We have PFT commenter joining us today to do an overrated, underrated draft, a bunch of topics. This is Kingston's baby. Um, This is a slow time in the sports year, uh, and so we gotta do shit like this. So bear with us and have some fun. Uh, PFT is one of my favorite guests. So Dr. Fax, get your list ready, and uh, let's get it on. All right, so so we're in. Uh, I got PFT here, it's been a while, man. Uh, First things first, we were talking offline, but like, I want to ask you how Chicago is, because I didn't even realize you had already made the move officially. When I asked Dan about it, he gave me a both sides political word salad about how both cities are great. What mm. do you think? I would say, uh, well, I mean, I've, I've been in Chicago for like a week and a half. So as a Chicago expert, I can say that it is much, much better than New York. Uh, in New York, you live in a tiny shoebox. Your kitchen is, you know, uh, hardly big enough to cook an egg in. Mm. Uh, and now I've got like an actual kitchen. I got a rooftop deck. I had Hank over for, for some beers, some steaks. We grilled on a roof the other night. It's been fantastic. And I, I get why people love New York. I just don't love it. So I'm, I'm glad to be living in a real house. I went car shopping yesterday, Chris. Yeah. Car what, shopping what is my at? favorite thing in the world to do. <laughs> What'd you look it. at? I look at a Bronco. Ooh. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I actually would have seen the, you as a the, Subaru guy. The new drop like, top one. Nice Forester. No offense. Are you saying that I'm a lesbian, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I've never seen one drive one of those, but I wouldn't know. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I'm looking at I'm looking at a lot of stuff, but car shopping is my favorite thing to do because I used to sell used cars, so I know I know what they're doing when I walk onto the lot. They ask me a certain question. I know what they're really getting at, and so I like you know it's it's a little dance that you do with a car salesperson. I'm not trying to waste their time because I have been on that side of it. So I just get like over the top honest with them. And I'm like, I, I tell them exactly what I'm looking for, how I'm going to pay for all this stuff right off the bat. And they're kind of like disarmed. They're like, well, I don't know any more tricks to use on you because, <laughs> because you, you just told me the truth about everything. Yeah. So it's like, 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 a, it's like hitting your shot the first play. Yeah, exactly. They're like, oh, well, this guy, this guy knows what he's doing. There was a dude that I one time sold a used car to that uh, brought his gun with him onto the lot. And that was that was his power move. He just stepped on, and you could see him. He was like strapping up his holster, like he didn't normally carry this thing around. He had an open carrier or whatever it was, because it was in Virginia at the time. It was actually Charlottesville. Oh, really? Yeah, 
Brown. Did it, did you worked at Brown. Brown. Brown, Brown, Brown. That's so crazy. I bought my car from Brown Auto. Your love oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah? What would you buy? Dodge Charger. Still have it. <laughs> yeah, and it's covered the bottom of it because we went tubing last week and went kayaking. And he had to drive through a big field. It's got like basically Wheatgrass. on the bottom of the of a door. You know how it's got the quiet strip? Yep. His whole the bottom of his 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 car has like a grass quiet strip. Some lady uh, last night stopped him and asked him where the fuck he he'd been driving. So he's still driving that Charger. And I actually used to date not to dox her, Marin Brown of the Brown Empire family in middle school. We saw a couple movies together. Oh, that's sick. Good for you. Yeah, yeah. good for you. So, getting some money there. So, what are the tricks that okay. uh, people try to pull? Because right now I'm trying to trade in my excursion. Uh, it's old for yeah. like a new car and i called and they were like yeah we'll give you like two thousand yeah, dollars for it and i, I didn't know what to, to say like i was about to say three thousand tops <laughs> so what, what do i do like what are the tricks i mean the Not hardest part trade-ins. about uh, the hardest part about trading in a car is they're always going to give you an insultingly low offer for it no matter right. what dealership you go to it's always going to take your breath away how little your car is worth yeah you can go in thinking like oh this this excursion is sweet i'm gonna get 8500 they're like yeah we'll give you 1700 out the door for it on trade <laughs> so just sell it my advice would be just sell your car sell it, on your own. yeah that's what i'm gonna do but if what are the biggest what's own... the biggest trick that like a, a car salesman pulls like what's the the easiest trick uh the easiest trick is actually car sales car sales are total bullshit so yeah. a lot of times they're not even allowed to call them sales what they'll do is they'll have like a, a sales event or they'll have a, a big tent event but it's not actually a sale because what they'll do is, especially with used cars, they'll take a car that's been on the lot for, I don't know, a month. Let's say that there's a, uh, a Chrysler Pacifica. It's mm-hmm. been sitting collecting dust for a month. They've marked it down to nineteen five, right? What they'll do is for the sale or the sales event, mm-hmm. they'll put a giant – well, first of all, they order a bunch of balloons. Mm-hmm. You have a bunch of balloons. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> so the more balloons – are around you in a car dealership, the more you're getting ripped off, basically. They'll buy a shitload Schaefer of balloons. Ashley had a ton of balloons in his car dealership. Yeah. They'll buy a shitload of balloons, put them in a room, and then they'll, they'll take the car that was 19.5, put a giant sticker on the front of it, and they'll write like 22.9, and then they'll cross out 22.9, and it's 21.5. And it's like, oh my God, I'm saving 1500 bucks. No, no, you're paying... Two thousand dollars more than you were going to pay if you bought this car <laughs> two weeks ago. Yeah, um, there's that kind of thing, and then there are some there's some honest people that work there though. Like it's yeah. not all it's not all scummy. I think since the internet has kind of taken over auto sales to a certain extent, where people can compare online like way easier. Um, it's gotten a little bit more honest because you can see what the inventory is, you can look at what they're asking for, and then you can just go in and bottom line them. So yesterday, uh, I, I walked in, I was looking at a Bronco. And I was like, can I take it for a test drive? Never, never sat in one. And the guy was like, okay, just have a seat and maybe you can you know, answer a couple questions for me. And I was like, well, okay, this is part of the process because mm-hmm. he, he's going to need my ID at some point. So he's not going to give me the keys to the car until he gets my ID and gets like my contact information. So I sit down. He, he goes, uh, look, scale one to 10, what would you say your credit score is? Like right <laughs> off the bat. <laughs> Isn't there a, num- a numeric system for that? Yeah. Why do yeah, you buy a wide scale one to ten? <laughs> <laughs> this is like a six hundred fifty. Yeah. Yeah. So he he was just like asked me to be honest with him about what my credit was, and um, <laughs> I knew that that was going to happen because I dressed like a bum going into the dealership. So mm-hmm. I was like, unless this person is a listener of part of my take, they're going to see me walking onto the lot right now wearing I was wearing like a stained oversized sweatsuit and like umbro shorts and flip flops. They're like this guy's not going to believe that I'm going to be able to afford a Ford Bronco and a gun. Yeah, and a gun. That's yeah. my number one tip. Did, Probably did, thought you were going to steal it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just get in and take off. Yeah. Did did did, yeah. did 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 the guy with the gun get his GMC Jimmy? He did not. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, okay. So a couple things on sports before we get in our over overrated underrated exercise here, Matt. What are we calling this? A draft or what? Because this is your it's a draft. Your, your, okay, it's a draft. Um, Okay, so Liv and the PGA merged yesterday, and you being an avid golf golfer, or at least a backswing guy, because I actually haven't seen your swing, uh, what do you think? Um, I think that this was an all-time behind-the-scenes negotiating move uh, by Jay Monahan, who seems like the world's biggest piece of shit. <laughs> and if I was on a PGA tour, I would, I, 
I would have to be restrained from attacking him, especially if I was one of those guys that did not take a hundred million dollars yeah. to go play golf for a year and do less work. And then all of a sudden I find out that, you know, our boss who was comparing people to like having blood on their hands essentially for, for doing business with the Saudis was doing business with the Saudis behind all of our backs and preventing me from getting my money. Well, I he didn't curious. want to get blood on Tiger's hands. <laughs> <laughs> so what he was doing was he was taking all the blood and putting it all over his hands. The problem with Jay Monahan is he forgot the first rule of Fight Club, which is you don't forget 9-11. Somehow he forgot 9-11 in a year. Uh, and I guess it begs the question, is Jay Monahan a bigger piece of shit than Dan Snyder? That's a good question. I, I haven't asked Dan Snyder about 9-11 yet. I plan to one day. Because <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sure he had something to do with it. Yeah. But uh, no, I, 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 I think this is one of the biggest scumbag moves that, you, that I remember in all of sports, actually. Like, the fact that he was telling people, like, hey, don't do business with these guys because they did 9-11. And then using that as, like, a, a, a barrier to his own players going out there and getting paid. Like, that sucks. I feel bad for anybody on the PGA Tour that listen to him, but it, it is a reminder. I think every now and again in sports, we need these reminders. You know, you know us, we're big player empowerment guys, yeah. except when it comes to uh, NBA players doing load management, but that's a different mm -hmm. story. Yeah, but definitely. like, we, we, look, we want players to get money because at the end of the day, the commissioners of these leagues are going to stick a knife yep. in your back if it means that make a small amount of profit in the long term over it. That's what I said a while back to these guys, and they were like, no way I would take money. Tiger should take money to go over there. And I was just like, why not? Like, why not take that money? Because at the end of the day, if something like this happens, now you're just looking like, Yeah, you're sitting fuck. there with your dick in your hand, and, and this guy costs these golfers over $100 uh, billion? Dollars? Or $1 billion. $1 billion, it costs yeah. them over $100 billion. Well, yeah. I'm just concerned so They've only got $10 Tiger. billion dollars into sports washing, but somehow... No, they, they cost these guys a billion dollars. Tiger Woods, like 800, 800 million. 800 million dollars. You know, uh, Zalatoris dude. had only made 15 mil, and they offered him 150. He said, hey, it was a, hey, mate, it was a dream of mine to play in a major, <laughs> mate. And, uh, and then a year later, he can play in a, All these guys that left can play in a major anyway. So it's terrible. And you know what the, fu the fucked up thing is? They're going after soccer. Uh, this is all part of the 2030 Saudi vision, which is uh, to diversify their investment in things outside oil. Because they don't want to, you know, they want to have all their eggs in one basket. And it kind of begs the question, while, you know, Jay Monahan's a piece of shit and these people are bad people, uh, is this good for the planet? Mm. That's, a, that's a good question, Chris. <laughs> it is a good question. And they're working with a charity. It's a 501c3. Well, not anymore. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was for profit. They, yeah. that, was, that was part of the explanation for, uh, for why they're merging. Um, and... It's, so a lot of people are saying that it had to do with the fact that uh, since there's the lawsuits going on between the two sides, there would be discovery that was going to get in the way for the PGA Tour. People would be able to see behind the scenes all their finances, realize how much they're not actually a nonprofit, and that's what made the PGA Tour come to the table and finally do the deal. I think they just wanted money, to be honest with you. And uh, yeah, it's, it, it, it's just tough. It's, it's got to be a tough day if you're a PGA Tour player. Yeah, and if you're a golf fan and for a year you were like, yeah, I'm not doing the live thing. I, I remember 9-11. And now you're like, how do I forget 9-11? They need to come around with a men in black thing and make everybody forget it. The people who are really fucked here are the wrestling fans. that They remember 9-11 really well. They remember when John Cena came in and announced that Osama bin Laden was killed. Who could forget that moment? They had no idea that the Saudis uh, already have a relationship with the WWE. Mm -hmm. So no matter who you are, it depends, you know, what sport you like. But no matter who you are, it feels like you, you got to forget 9-11 now. Yeah, every time I go to Chipotle, I forget 9-11. <laughs> yeah. <'Cause they're, laughs> the, uh, the public investment fund has a lot of money in, in those burritos, too. So yeah. it's everywhere. They're yeah. definitely they're, they're putting money in everything, and they've got more money than God. So eventually you won't be able to do anything without giving money to Mohammed bin Salman eventually. Do you think these guys should be able to like? Do you think these have these guys have like liable lawsuits like with the I don't PGA? Know. I'm, like, you know, I'm no expert, but you would think you would think no, like I for the difference. So. I don't think they do. I'm no legal expert, but I don't think they do. But like, I feel like if I was a player, I, like I would not want to play 
again until I got the difference of whatever I was supposed to make. If I was one of those guys that had an offer on the table and I told the PGA, hey, I'm thinking about going to do this and you guys talk me out of it, I need I need the difference. Whatever you're yeah, paying unless, me now. In, unless there was some sort of collusion where a year ago Monaghan and, and Saudis were in bed, uh, you, you can't really apply morality as, as a reason why these guys get fucked out of money because they made the decision on moral grounds. And then they change, you know, and then the, you know, Monaghan and the PJs change, change their mind. So I don't think so. But hey, I want to do a, um, I want to give out a worst plane ride. And I know uh, that, that PFT is a, a big hockey fan. Uh, it's something we do on this show. We give out worst plane ride all fall. Uh, but it's got to be the Florida Panthers to get smacked seven to two. I checked the weather there, it was 93 degrees at like seven, eight at night when they lost the game. So these guys are taking showers. You know, there's nothing worse than when you get out to the bus and you're still sweating through your suit. And then your Canadian dad is all hungover. Maybe he's drunk. Uh, maybe he's drunk again. He's somewhere between a hangover and drunk. Uh, he took a beating on the Panthers losing 7-2. to two. Uh, It's just a bad, bad trip to see your folks at the bus and go on a plane and get back to Florida. Do they have any shot? Uh, yeah, I feel like they do. Cause in hockey, things change so quickly. Like th- that game was out of hand after the first period, it, it, halfway through the second, it seemed like all Florida decided to do was just beat the shit out of the Knights. If they could just like get into fights, get into scraps, get all your aggression out right now. So they kind of gave up on that game, or at least they gave up on winning that game, uh, for probably 33%, uh, is, is really all that they really, uh, they, they let... They let about 33% of the game go by when they were actually playing hockey. Then they turned it up. They said, we're going to turn this into a street fight. And then they'll go home, try to regroup, and we'll see what happens game three. I feel like things can – weird shit happens in hockey. So I'm not going to say that it's over. But that is – that's a bad plane ride because you also add in the fact that you're leaving Vegas. and Any plane ride out of Vegas sucks. Always, that's dude. Always a nominate. Also, Chris, have you forgotten 9-11 doing a worst plane ride segment so quickly after Wow. That's- <laughs> You know what? See how that that see how the deep is it called the DP tour? You live in PGA. Yeah. The, see how the DP makes you forget. I so, mean. so honestly, hand up when I saw that they were also merging with the DP World Tour. <laughs> I thought that Dude Perfect was somehow involved. Oh yeah, with, well. <laughs> with the public investment fund. Now, <laughs> I, I was not familiar with it, so I was relieved to see that Dude Perfect was not getting billions. Yeah, because I don't want to see them sell out. Um, that would break my. That would break already, my heart. They already sold out for the NFL and did the draft and ruined Donna Kelsey's moment. So, um, all right, let's get into overrated, underrated, huh, Matt? All you, right. you drive this fucking bus. All right, so here's how it's going to work. There's eight categories. There's food or drink. Animal, internet personality, historic figure or event, pop culture trend or moment, clothes or accessories, states, and sport moment. Sports moment. We're going to go by category. We have a predetermined order. It's overrated first, starting with food or drink. Chris, you're up first, then facts, then PFT. And PFT, you'll get to go first on underrated. Okay, overrated. Um, Sliced bread. <laughs> Okay, everybody's like, oh, it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. But I've heard of a million things that are better than sliced bread. So maybe it's time to change that standard. I think sliced bread is overrated. I also want to throw uh, McDonald's McFlurries with M&M's into the, into the, the conversation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because that's a hazard, man. The M&M's are all cold and they're hard and the, the ice cream's all soft and it's, and it's cold and it's confusing. If you have it done right, the M&M's are crushed. Oh, yeah, because you can get them crushed, right? Supposed to be crushed. Okay, so overrated M&M McFlurry with uncrushed (laughs) M&M's. Okay. (laughs) All right, facts are up. All right. Overrated food, I'm going with corned beef hash. What? No. no. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, wait. First off, what the hell is corned beef hash? It looks disgusting coming out. It comes out of a can. It comes out of a can. It looks disgusting. It's like, like what, what, what is it? It looks like brains. It looks like spam with a little bit of um, potatoes in it. No, I disagree. Mm-hmm. I think corned beef hash is delicious. <laughs> what is it? Do you know what it is? It's beef and it's corn. <laughs> and then they exactly. make a hash out of it. Yeah, See? you got you. You make a hash, which I think a hash is just like you dice up 
a potato and then you mix it in. I don't mm-hmm. know, but I, I love corned beef hash. I, I eat it. I eat it like once a year, but I love it. <laughs> you know, I <laughs> think corned beef hash and eggnog should be year round. <laughs> Agreed. Oh, I love eggnog. Okay. You, no disagreement there. All right. PFT overrated food. All right. My overrated food. This might ruffle a couple feathers. I think, I think fillets are overrated. Filet mignon. Overrated. Oh, ooh. I, I kind of Filet mignon. Because, yeah, I'd rather, it, if I'm getting a steak and you look at the menu, it always says filet mignon parentheses eight ounces. And then it's right next to a New York strip that's like 16 to 20 ounces. A ribeye. Rib that's like 22 above. I never get the filet. Why? It looks like a hockey puck. It doesn't have the right <laughs> marbling, not the right consistency. <laughs> yeah, I always I, go for the bigger steak. Yeah, if you're going to go, go to a steakhouse, go hard in the paint. I'd like to change my pick. Well, I mean, no, I had another one on my list, and this is the strongest one. I think it's boneless chicken wings. <laughs> and you might say, well, most Whoa. people like bone-in chicken wings. There's like, no such thing as a boneless chicken wing, Exactly, is there? dude. Mm-hmm. And, and as of 2022, it became the most popular dish out of the two. And boneless chicken wings are made of chicken breast, like the inside of a chicken breast, and they don't even have skin. It's just basically like a chicken tender doused in too much barbecue sauce. Ah. All right, so we go around the, around the corner, back to PFT for underrated food or drink. Okay, underrated. I'm going to go with the empanadas. I've been on an mm. empanada kick recently. It's like okay. the perfect meal. You can hold it in your hand, and it's fried, and you can bite into it, and it's got all the ingredients inside mixed together. It's perfect. I don't know what it looks like, an empanada. It's like a little pocket. It looks like you're carrying around a pocket with you. Okay, I do. I do. I do know. It looks like a little clutch. Yeah. Like a little meat clutch. And it's, it's great. It's Like I said, it's a self-contained meal. Okay. I'm going to go with... Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on a minute, player. <laughs> I'm going to go with underrated foods. I'm going to go with turkey. I think... Most people, you only eat turkey once a year for Thanksgiving, and it's such a great meal. My like, kid eats turkey every day. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, mm-hmm. like not, not, not in a sandwich, yeah. not like turkey slices, but, yeah. like, you know, turkey with the gravy, mashed potatoes, the whole yeah. thing. I think, it's, I think we should do it more than just once a year. And you, you kill turkeys, full disclosure. <laughs> I do. Did you know, PFT, he's actually the executioner at this farm. Around Thanksgiving, not just like, any turkeys, though. The like, most expensive turkeys. You know how NFL pound, players man. used to have to go get other jobs in the off season. Yeah, uh, this guy, like in <laughs> podcasting off season, goes to <laughs> goes and kills turkeys. How do you That's, kill them? We shock them. Shock them. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen that video of, of Sarah Palin talking to the news, and meanwhile, there's a turkey behind her that's just getting like its head put into a grinder. <laughs> No, <laughs> oh, it's, no. A good one. it's a good one you know fun fact about turkeys you probably know this because you spend so much time killing them <laughs> they can't fuck turkeys don't fuck they're like every bulldog. turkey every turkey you buy at the grocery store is bought uh because it, it's it's born from artificial insemination yep eggs. it's a virgin and they, it's a they, virgin they get a bunch of eggs shipped from london mm-hmm. this, this farm here oh, and and turkeys are also they're afraid of brooms really yeah, that's okay. how you wrangle them. You put okay. a, a broom next to them, and they freak out. Or you with a broom. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so uh, I'm going to go chicken and waffles from McDonald's. Uh, you didn't know you could get chicken and waffles at McDonald's, but uh, if you get the southern fried chicken breakfast sandwich and ask for uh, McGriddle, uh, you know, uh, a bread there, you're going to get chicken and waffles. I promise you, try it. Sounds fire. It is fire. Does McGriddle have have squares on it? No, you're not going to get the squares, but it's going <laughs> to be close enough. To, yeah, you, you might be right. <laughs> might be. Maybe it's a bad pick. All right, next category: animal. Chris, you're up. Oh, okay. Overrated animal. Overrated. The dolphin. Okay, like everybody loves dolphins. Uh, they're like a, a you know this big symbol. Uh, they're like a top ten most popular animal, but they kill babies, mm-hmm. and that's not enough. They rape. Uh, I've seen a YouTube video of a woman getting pinned down by a dolphin with an erection. Uh, <laughs> supposedly, rumor has it they tried that to, on Demi Moore on the shoot of a, a, a movie. Uh, they also, bottlenose dolphins are known to isolate a woman in the pod for weeks at a time and have their way with that dolphin. They actually um, they take puffer fish and make them sec- secrete this to get high to get high and that's and that's around. another the dolphins have a drug problem they stay <laughs> awake five five days at a time they're obviously coked up and they get high off the puffer fish 
Damn, they they really do sound like a like bad news. Yeah, they're bad news, dude. They they have great. I would not branding. let my kid hang out with dolphins. No, they have great branding. There was this couple from North Carolina that wanted to go do a dolphin assisted birth in Hawaii, and this is how crazy it is. They were going to go there and spend time in the water with the dolphins before, after, and during. They were going to have a water birth with the dolphins. What the hell? You I know? like to play a little game sometimes with stories like these <laughs> called, guess what race this person is. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm well, go they're... out on a limb and say they were, they were mm, whiter than I am. That's like the white version of doing a water <laughs> birth with Bill Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, so anyway. A, put- a pudding birth? <laughs> yeah, pudding birth. <laughs> All right, Come facts. on now. Overrated animals. <laughs> Over overrated animals. I know you guys might not like this, but I think dogs are overrated, man. They're too high maintenance. Like dogs is just you can't you can't dogs are like babies. Like you just like you can't leave dogs like alone. If take. if if you leave if you leave your dog in the car, like people will get mad. It's the same thing. It's it's just like having a kid. If you eat your dog, people get mad. Eat your dog. Yeah, Chinese people eat dogs. You eat Chinese all the time. Korean. Yeah, but Korean, Korean people. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, this is yeah. Of course, can't people, eat them. Get can't mad leave if you them leave in the your car. Dog in the car, making it die a painful death. <laughs> yeah, my God! All dude. of a sudden, I'm the asshole. What's yeah, up with that? Exactly. <laughs> you can't bring the dog anywhere. People, people have to lie. You can't bring the dog anywhere. Every dog is a, is a, a um, emotional support animal now. When they're really not. Like, I, I don't know. It's just too much. Dogs are overrated, man. Okay, all right. All right. Terrible take, but okay. Overrated animal, PFT. <laughs> Most overrated animal. I'm going to go with horses. <laughs> horses are overrated. I've never been a horse guy. Everybody knows the weird horse people in the world, like the horse girls that grow up, mm-hmm. uh, you know, doing equestrian shit with rich parents. Like, they're weird. Also, I looked it up, so I've got the stat right in front of me. You know, despite all advances in modern sports science, no horse has ever been faster than Secretariat. The mm. sport peaked. Horses peaked in 1973. That's interesting. Yeah. Wow. So it was the fastest horse ever. So I looked it up. If humans peaked in 1973, the world record 100-yard dash would be 9.95 seconds instead of 9.56 or whatever. The world record mile time would be 3 minutes 56 seconds. We barely broke... The four-minute mile in 1973. Now it's down to three minutes, 41 seconds. Mm-hmm. Like humans, humans have really... We have a higher we, ceiling. We took the... We, it was a passing of the torch in 1973. And <laughs> horses were like, humans, you got this. Yeah, I feel like if you become a horse girl, like either... Well, if you have a troubled childhood, you either become a horse girl or a porn star. It's like the two professions that I'm like, oh, that's a stay away. Sometimes both, depending on what kind of movies you're watching. Exactly. <laughs> All right, DFT, underrated animal. Uh, my underrated animal, I'm going with the Cape Buffalo. The yes. Cape Buffalo yeah. is very underrated. It's a giant, giant beast of a cow. Some people say it kills more people per year than lions and hippos and rhinos and elephants, but we don't. nobody really knows. People just kind of give that award to the hippo, but there's so many people that die out in the wild, and they're like, oh, this person got trampled to death by something. Mm-hmm. And they just they they give it to the hippo because they think oh it must be a hippo but no Cape buffaloes are called Black Death and they're very good for the environment Cape buffaloes they'll eat anything they're like they're, you know when you see those those yards with big ass weeds growing out of there you can't just take a lawnmower to them you first you got to do like some some uh, some preliminary care on it a Cape buffalo will go and eat anything that it wants and then it leaves nice trim little grass behind it so the more selective grazers the picky eaters can then come in and they can eat the, the bottoms of the grass and the other animals can get at the bugs that are living at the roots. So the Cape Buffaloes are they're they're just monsters. So without the Cape Buffalo, the zebra might not even exist. Mm. Um, I've got one more fun Cape Buffalo fact. I don't know how much time you guys had set aside for Buffalo. We got a lot uh, for Buffalo. <laughs> when they when they determine uh, where they're gonna be going, like what direction that they're gonna walk in next. All the women get together, right? And the women just lay down. And then one by one, a woman will like stand up and stretch and then like move to one side of the herd and start facing a certain direction. Then another will get up, stretch, walk, start facing a certain direction. And then eventually they all start walking the same way and looking the same direction. 
and then they all get up together and leave. So it's like a group decision. Mm. It's like women. It's like a bachelorette party. Once everyone starts looking <laughs> at their phones, then you know that it's time to, to to bounce and get out of there. That's what. That's how Cape Buffalo decide where to roll. Yeah, that's they great. they move as a unit. They're good for the environment, and they're deadly. Mm-hmm. Yep. Nate. So my underrated is going to be cats. All cats, not just small cats, also big cats. I've oh, okay. recently gotten into watching Naked and Afraid and Alone, and I realize that when people are camping, it's it's not so much bears that scare them. It's always talking cougars. about cougars, yeah. big cats, and pumas, and that if they see something like that, that they just know that it, it's pretty much it's over. Yeah. Like. They, they they don't seem that scared when they have bear spray. And, like, I would think that you would be more afraid of a bear. You're more afraid of the mountain lion because you don't you, – there's no warning sign. And they will hunt you. They'll follow you. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, I guess, like, I had, I didn't really know that until recently. You get so. Garfield. You get lions. You get <laughs> you get cougars. Yeah. It's a nice play. You get my co-host. Yeah, you get, you get all of them. Big cat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> big cat. Yeah, you get big cat. <laughs> I'm going to go with a frog. We've talked about frogs on this pod recently, PFT. I didn't tell you this, but uh, we, we went camping, and a uh, frog ended up in a wash cycle. Uh, he, he sat through two hot loads, uh, and he was clinging to the inside of the, the window. Wow. Uh, yeah, no, pretty lit. And then also, they're good for the environment. They, uh, they eat bugs. They're good indicators. So, like, if there's frogs by a body of water, you know that the body of water is clean. Uh, the other thing is frog legs taste good too. Hugo's in yeah. Chicago. Oh, you're in Chicago. If you ever mm-hmm. go to the casino, Hugo's, they have a frog legs. Try them. Casino it's really good. Frog legs. <laughs> yeah. And Mike Tyson gets high off frogs. So that's good. Like it's, if there were not frogs, like Mike Tyson would be out just brutalizing everybody. Like it's good that Mike Tyson has an outlet and we have the frogs to thank for that. And then lastly, the other night, uh, we have a keypad on the side of our door, and Meg heard the keypad going off. I was out of town, so she starts panicking because she thinks somebody's trying to get in the door. It's the frog. <laughs> the frog's punk- punching in different numbers on the keypad. So they're really talented animals. They're good for the environment, and they're a good vibe. I don't mind picking up a frog. They're one of the most handleable reptiles. Right. They are. They are. They're also good for telling, like, if, if you see somebody wearing a frog on a T-shirt in the wild – you can spot an art teacher from a mile away. No question. <laughs> no question. That person does pottery. I can and, see. And pot. I can see the, the the frog stamp on your breast. Mm-hmm. All right, back to overrated Chris internet personality. Ooh, overrated internet personality. Um, I'd like to start with underrated. I'd like to file a motion to start with underrated while I think of an overrated. But underrated is is drill. Uh, and I know PFT probably agrees with me. Uh, Wint is one of the best personalities on the internet. If you want good tweets that'll make you laugh, follow Drill. Uh, he's a comedic genius. All right, we'll just have facts do his overrated internet personality then. I'm going to do my overrated or underrated? Do overrated. Overrated. Bringing a little controversy here. I'm going to go with Billy Football. Overrated? Oh, wow. <laughs> wow, I love it. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's just it's just my take. Okay, he's another frat guy to me. Mm. I can't be the only one that thought about Billy when Chris was talking about a frog sitting through two hot loads. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. He would have loved the last section of this draft. <laughs> he would have. Uh, I have to disagree with you. I have to. I have to vocalize my disagreement on that one because Billy is. Uh, He's talented. Billy's talented at his own thing. Sometimes his talents aren't things that most people would consider to be talents. Um, but I, I like Billy. Billy's a good kid. All right, PFT, give us your overrated internet personality. See, this is a tough one because I know that I know that whatever I say is going to come back. To the <laughs> it's definitely going to get back to the person. For sure. Overrated internet personality. I'm going to go with Darren Ravel because as much as people absolutely hate him, I still think he's overrated. <laughs> That's wild. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> Don't you like his jalapeno drink, though? <laughs> I I have no idea what that is. I had one. It was good. All right. PFT, underrated internet personality. Uh, my underrated internet personality. 
I'm going to go with Billy Football. I think Billy Football is underrated. He gets a lot of shit from a lot of people. He is a frat guy uh, who d- didn't happen to be in a frat, but he totally embodies what you're saying. I know, I know what you're getting at. But he also is so much more. Like he's also a, he's a frog enthusiast. He's a, uh, actually, more than anything, he respects mass. It would probably really kill him to know that you hated him because you're a big no, dude. I don't, I don't, I don't hate him. I <laughs> actually, him. I love Billy Football. We only okay, hung yeah. out, we hung out with him once and it was, it was an amazing we eight, got him eight so hours drunk. or so. <laughs> Remember we got him all drunk and he said that he got us drunk, but he couldn't show up to work. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know? Yeah, Billy's such a liar. But um, yeah, he, he was talking the other day about just starting a podcast with, with your brother, Chris. So oh, with, that's, uh, yeah, that'd Kyle be good. Yeah, that'd be good. And J.J. Watt. And um, <laughs> the, the point of the podcast would just be to get them in a room and wrestle each other so that Billy could watch. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> right, that's Nate, pretty good. Underrated personality. Underrated. <laughs> I'm going to go with Dr. Fax. <laughs> oh, that's good. Self-promotion. <laughs> Got to put my name out there a little bit. I don't get a chance to be on a podcast with guys like PFT and Chris Long at the same time. So yeah. got to throw my name out there a little bit. Mm-hmm. Okay, overrated. Bradley Martin. <laughs> he's just big. You yeah, know? Well, that's your doppelganger. I know, he's my doppelganger, but like, try doing that without being big. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> You know, yo, he's too big for you. That's that's a crazy pick, yo. Well, no, I just was scrolling looking for people, and I can make a strong case for why you know he has a lot of help. Oh man, mm-hmm. that's oh. crazy. You know, I like the Nelk Boys and the whole. No, crew. I love Bradley Martin. I'm just saying because he's big. Can you put that in per- per- parentheses <laughs> so it's on the graphic so he doesn't get mad? Uh, <laughs> because he's big. All right, historic <clears throat> figure event overrated to Chris. Oh, great! I've got some good ones here. Thomas Thomas Edison, okay? He was a real shitbag, and he was a volume guy. I mean, all he did was file a bunch of patents um, and just hope one sticked. He was a look-busy guy. And a lot of them weren't even his ideas. Not even his ideas. From 1800 to 1879, people were working on the light bulb already, okay? <laughs> he was standing on the shoulders of giants. And then the filament that he used in 1879 wasn't even the one that ended up being the one we use today. You know, now it's tungsten, uh, but he was you fucking around with a bunch of plants. And here's the worst thing he did. His, his rival was uh, Ni- Tesla. Nikola Tesla, mm-hmm. uh, and he was a big alternating current guy, uh, mm-hmm. whereas uh, Edison was a direct current guy. And so they had this little rivalry, and to try to throw shade at alternating current, uh, Thomas Edison, I don't know how to say this, he executed an elephant publicly in New York City <laughs> Uh, with alternating current. He hooked him up to Tesla's alternating current and electrocuted an elephant in New York City. And here's the worst part. It just gets worse. Okay? It just gets worse. He wasn't even sure that the alternating current would kill the elephant, so he gave him cyanide-laced carrots right before the execution. He's a bad guy. He was a bad guy, and he was standing on the shoulders of uh, giants. You know, he also tried to monopolize the film industry. And then, you know what he did after he uh, electrocuted that elephant? Uh, he, he made a movie out of it. You know what it was called? Mm-mm. Electrocuting an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> Just a real shit bag. Yeah, asshole. And, and he, stole, uh, he stole all of Tesla's work and then paid him off and said, okay, go, go live overseas. I don't want to talk to you anymore because I stole all your shit. I can't have you talking to the press. Just a greedy guy. I agree. All right, Nate. Historical figures overrated. I'm going with another Thomas, and I'm going with Thomas Jefferson. Yeah, I agree. Thomas Jefferson, man. Even though I am a UVA alum, a lot of a lot of his bad stuff is right is, on the line. <laughs> is overpowered in the history books, and um, a lot of UVA was was or most of UVA was built by his lovely slaves. So. Um, mm. I don't. I, I'm not. I'm like on the fence about Thomas Jefferson. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Chris. When you said a lot of the stuff that he did was right on that line, what, mm-hmm. what would you consider that line to be? I, I would say. <laughs> I'd say owning human beings is somewhere on the other side of the line. Okay. Um, you yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, no, I. Um, I agree. I actually had TJ as my most overrated historical figure too. I've got a, a long-standing beef with Thomas Jefferson. Uh, he he claims to have invented all this stuff that they found laying around Monticello. Mm-hmm. Bullshit. 
That's all bullshit. Mm-hmm. Yep. He, he says that he invented macaroni and cheese. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson claims that he invented mac and cheese. That's fucking cap. Yeah. He claims yeah. that he invented yeah. the elevator, which is just a dumb waiter that he had on a pulley just so that his slaves could make him meals and he wouldn't have to interact with them. Everybody knows uh, Otis invented the elevator. <laughs> oh, you know Otis, man? I am too. I Dyson Krupp can get out of here. I'm an yeah. Otis guy up and down. Yeah, me too. I, I, uh... I also think that Thomas Jefferson lied about some other stuff. I think he, um, I don't think he really founded the University of Virginia. Mm-hmm. I think that there was, he had help doing that. If you've ever read his notes, because uh, I, I, I read a lot of Thomas Jefferson writing when I was in college, he has this paper called Notes on the State of Virginia. That's maybe the most racist thing that you'll ever read in your life. Look it up. I'm, just, I'm not going to even get into it because it's like, it is really, really bad, and you're reading this, and you're like, "Wait a second this this is the guy that's on the two dollar bill." Yeah, the and uh, bill. The also the two dollar bill. bill is overrated. I'm also boycotting Monticello. I just want to I just want to announce that I've never been uh, I've been boycotting it since I was a kid. Nice. So yeah, I'm on the right side there. of the street, Chris. Yeah, I'm on the right side. <laughs> All right, PFT, who's overrated? Uh, you mean underrated? Uh, did you want to pick no, Thomas Jefferson as you well? You can pick oh. whichever one you want. Okay, I was going to take Thomas Jefferson, but I, I can switch it up. I can say that Rommel, the desert fox, mm-hmm. uh, the, the German general, overrated. Everyone's like, oh, this guy did such a great job fighting in northern Africa. Guess what? Guess who was in charge of the Western Front on D-Day? Yeah, that's right, Rommel. So Rommel mm-hmm. fucked everything up for the Germans on D-Day. Um, didn't help that the H-man was sleeping in. Didn't believe him. <laughs> Wait to get the tank order. Mm-hmm. But uh, that's yeah, Rommel... Pick. Rommel overrated. Cool. All right. Now you're up. Can I add one more overrated? King Tut. Uh, King Tut was uh, the smallest tomb in the the Valley of Kings, for God's sake. Uh, He was 18 when he died. He was disabled. He had a club foot. He was, uh, what do they call it, malarial. Mm -hmm. Uh, And he was inbred. Uh, He really didn't do much. He was the ultimate Nepo baby. They They just buried him with a bunch of bling. Wasn't his fault he was inbred, bro? Well, no, but I mean, like you know, he also shouldn't get all these fucking like casinos and shit and good branding. The guy didn't do anything. All right, PFT Anyways. underrated historic figure or event? Uh, my underrated historic figure is Tom DeLonge, right. guitar player from Blink One Eighty Two, <laughs> because he is the dude that got the United States government to admit that we got aliens. Mm-hmm. So he quit. He quit playing guitar for Blink One Eighty Two, one of the best <laughs> punk rock bands of all time. And uh, everybody was like, "Yo, Tom, why are you why are you leaving this massively successful endeavor?" He's like, "Well, because I'd like to prove that aliens exist." And everyone was like, "Oh, okay. Well, you're insane. Thank you for letting us know." Mm-hmm. And then fast forward about twelve years, and his organization actually got the Pentagon to release footage and admit that they have evidence of unexplained flying objects. All time, call your shot, guy. That's great. That is crazy. And how about the UFOs these days in the news? I feel like I read something every week, and it's like small news now. It, it's yeah. just like we've accepted it. Well, my theory on that is that be, because Taylor Swift broke up with her boyfriend at the same time that the <clears throat> UFO news came out, nobody yeah. ca- cared about aliens. That's interesting. <laughs> yep. All right, Dr. Fax. Underrated historical figure, I'm going with Benjamin Banneker. He was the first black surveyor, and then he was the first black president, presidential appointee. He helped select the sites for the U.S. Capitol building, the Treasury building, and the White House. Mm. So, That's pretty good. Yeah. Sick. Is it my turn? Yes, sir. Oh, this is going to dovetail nicely. <laughs> uh, John Brown. Mm. Yeah, because mm-hmm. he, 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 you know, bleeding Kansas and all that stuff. He was about that life. You know, and some people don't like when I bring up John Brown, which is like kind of telling on yourself. Uh, like, what did he do wrong? He just killed a bunch of slaveholders. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I'm a big John Brown fan. Guy was was certifiably insane, loose cannon, but he used it for good. Yeah, I agree. Um, fun fact: one of my distant relatives was hanged with John Brown at Harper's Ferry. No way. Wow, wow. Yeah, the the Copics, the Copics went and they rolled they were John Brown was going they're like if John's going I'm going. Oh, that's so badass. Yeah. That's what have cool. I done with my life? <laughs> I feel the same way about Gertrude Ederly, who I'm related to who swam the English Channel. She was the first woman to swing the swim the English Channel. 
Did you know that? I'm related to no, a I swimmer. Didn't know that. Yeah. That is. All right, All right nice. congrats. Chris, Long. overrated yeah. pop culture trend or moment? Uh, overrated. Um, I, I'm deciding between democracy and flash mobs. Um, <laughs> oh, <only laughs> failed recently. Yeah, I think, I think I'm going to go democracy. Because it's not working very well. You know? Where in the democracy handbook was like buying as much of the presidency as you can? I, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go. But honorable mention: flash mobs. I hate flash mobs, making me uncomfortable. What are you doing? I don't know you. Yeah. <laughs> Never thought of democracy as a trend, but sounds good. <laughs> right, back. It is a trend. <laughs> Overrated. I'm gonna go with the gritty. I think it's. Mm. Uh, I think it's. I'm not gonna lie. It's a little bit too hard of a of a dance for everyone to do. So I don't like the fact that it's so popular and like the kids like it. It is I, easy. I can almost do it. My, <laughs> my white kids do it like on the regular, which I'm, be, I'm better. I'm, I, I, I like them doing that more than I like them dabbing. I was just about to say it was a hard pick between the gritty or, or dab. Fucking Dan, his co-host is the biggest perpetrator of white kids dabbing in America. <laughs> I mean, Cam Newton, yeah. Mm-hmm. Cam Bad influence. Newton, yeah. yeah. All right, PFT, overrated pop culture trend or moment? Overrated pop culture moment. Um, can I just go with Elvis's entire career? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. That'll work. I think well, Elvis is very overrated, just in general. as a, And not just the music, the phenomena behind Elvis. Yeah. <laughs> very weird and overrated. I never really got into his music. I don't rock with it that much. But he, he's got like... Somebody out there is going to get mad and correct me, but Elvis has like no bangers. He's got Hound Dog. Okay, I stole that one. He's got Suspicious Minds. Oh, I admit, good song. Great job. You did one good one. But besides that, I never Elvis been to do Spain as a banger. But other than that, I'm with you. Some of his gospel stuff is very good. And people like dress up like him and dedicate their entire lives to looking like him. Las Vegas is a shrine people, to the man who's not even from Las Vegas. You know, get, I feel people shit. get married by Elvis a yeah, lot. So me and Meg were going to do a ten year anniversary, like get remarried in Elvis costumes, but she's pregnant now, so she'd be like late term Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, uh, maybe right. put some some baking powder on her under her nose and and have her all sweaty with a cigarette hanging out. Um, Died okay. on the toilet. Yeah, oh, underrated. Underrated, underrated movement. I'm going to go with sortition, which I is. I don't even know what that is. Must be it's kind of it's kind of like the um, it predates democracy in Greece, and they only did it for a little bit. But the way they would choose their leaders would be everybody writes their name on a piece of paper, puts their name in a hat in town. Then they just go through and they pick one name out, and they're like, "Oh, Chris, you're <laughs> mayor. Congratulations." And then that person's mayor for like five years, and then five years later they do the whole thing again. So it was completely random. So you'd have the the biggest shithead in town sometimes would be put in charge of leading the town, but it it gave uh, it gave a reason for the schools and the entire system that people lived under to be as good as possible, knowing that maybe the worst cared after person amongst you could one day end up ruling you. That, that's uh that would have been good for cable news. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> That'd be great. I think it'd be great for the NFL draft. Yeah, it would. <laughs> yeah, Just pick it would. names out of that. Uh-huh. I like that. That's a great pick. Learn something there. All right, facts. <clears throat> Underrated um, pop culture events, I'm going to go with the Dirty Bird. I feel like the Dirty Bird missed its kind of time with social media and the internet, but like it was really kind of like the first football celebration kind of like line dance. Mm-hmm. Like, And if you think about – all the different celebrations we've had in football, there's nothing that's really been like the Dirty Bird. No. And if the Dirty Bird had, a, like, if that had been something that had happened during the Mean Gritty World. The is the new Dirty Bird. It, it is, but it's not. Everyone can't do the, everyone can't do the, the Gritty. Dirty everyone the, could do it, the Dirty Bird. Is dirty the old, Bird is the old Icky Shuffle. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah, the Icky Shuffle was, yeah. was that, but yeah. still the Dirty Bird. Okay, that's pretty good, though. I think, <laughs> yeah, I think it's underrated. Okay, Y2K, <laughs> underrated, okay? What? 
Well, if you think about Y2K, if it wasn't for Y2K, we wouldn't have been doing all that coding in the years leading up to protect our software. So I think like Spin Zone, I think Y2K was actually a good thing. Um, and on top of that, like everybody spent a lot of time together. You know how in the movies when they're like in Don't Look Up, they're about to die and everybody's at the dinner table. Can you imagine after they said all those nice, nice things, if the world didn't end, that's kind of like how it happened in 2000. And then lastly, this was the best part. If you were in high school, like I was, it was like, hey, the world's ending soon. Maybe we should do this. <laughs> you know, like you were talking to your, your gal or You're your BG, sicko. your baby girl, and you were like, hey, like tomorrow is not it's, it's not, not promise. promise. It's not mm-hmm. promise. So we should we should do this. Did your family buy canned goods? Uh, I can't remember. Okay. Yeah. I had well, to go buy. A, I, had, I had to go buy a lot of canned goods. Uh, yeah. I remember. Yeah. Y two K. In two thousand, when it turned two thousand one, and people tried real hard. Some people, like marketing teams, tried real hard to get some awareness out there of actually this is the real year two thousand mm-hmm. because there was mm-hmm. no year zero. So let's celebrate this year like it's the year 2000. And, and they tried like, the Mayan end of the world, too, in 2012. And I was like, oh, I'm over it. I've been through Y2K. Because Y2K was underrated. Who right, came next. up with the name Y2K? Because they really knocked sure. it out of the park. They did. It was perfect. It was very turn of the century. Um, okay, so we're going to... Clothes or accessories? Clothes and accessories. Overrated. Okay, this is one that's pretty good here. Um. Whoo! I mean, handkerchiefs overrated. Just a That's snotty a little tablecloth in your pocket. Squeegee kind of underrated. Like, I feel like if you're a homeless guy, like you should have a squeegee. Like, I'm gonna wait, cop. Wait till we come back to the underrated. No. Oh yeah, yeah, underrated. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going overrated. Uh, wedding ring. Okay, I have a tattoo wedding ring. If you're serious about it, guys, get it tattooed. If you're a, ph- a, a uh, what's the word, philanderer. Uh, then, then just wear your normal wedding ring that you can take off all the time. Plus, I remember when I got a wedding ring, the first week it felt like my finger was going to fall off. And like the heaviness of that wedding ring reminded me of the heaviness of the, the burden of becoming a married man. <laughs> but I love marriage now because I have a tattoo and it's, it's, it's light. You don't feel anything. All right, Nate. Am I going to get in trouble for that? <laughs> no. My wife actually came up with that. Okay, overrated. <laughs> I have the visor. It's it's just an incomplete hat. I don't incomplete hat. Yeah, I yeah. don't. I don't like the visor. You like complete hats. Yeah, your head. Your head. Like especially if you wear a visor when you're when you're kayaking, the top of your head just burns up. Like yeah, you you're shading your face, but what about the top of your skull and the your vi- scalp? The visor is. It should be only allowed to be worn by coaches south of the Mason Dixon line. Still and and that doesn't that doesn't jive with what you're saying because like, you know, this is a Lane Kiffin, uh, Steve Spurrier, Doug Peterson and Jacksonville thing. And it does and it doesn't do anything good for your hair either. It does something good well, for Doug Peterson's hair. It, yeah, so sometimes when you get the guys wearing the visors with the funny hair that spikes up, you know, the ones that have the hair so <laughs> yeah. up, that's a good look though. Yeah, I, I agree that cool. Visors, visors don't work for everybody. Yeah, they work for Guy Fieri. Yeah, he okay. has. The, see, he has the hair. He has yeah. the hair thing in the middle yeah. where yeah, he yeah. can do it. But okay, PFT, you're up. Overrated. Overrated accessory. I'm gonna go with tongue ring. Not that great. <laughs> totally disagree. Uh, well, maybe we just have different experiences. <laughs> <in our professors. laughs> all rings. I like all rings. Nose rings, tongue rings, belly button rings. I like them all. My wife took me through this last night at dinner. I had to be truthful. I don't. I, I don't ring. see the appeal in a tongue ring. I really don't. Having having experienced a tongue ring, yeah, it's not. It's it's dangerous. It's dangerous. Yeah, the, ranking the rings and no, Nate, you can't put that other ring in there. No, I almost uh, got, I almost got a nose ring before. I, I go nose ring one. <laughs> I go uh, tongue ring two, belly button ring three. Yeah. Okay. Belly All button right. two. I don't like the nose ring in the middle. I don't like the one that looks like a bull. <laughs> no, the side nose ring. Side nose ring. That's cute. Yeah. What about Prince George? Uh, <laughs> who's that? <laughs> it's the dick ring. Oh, dick ring. <laughs> That's not on the board. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was talking about women with tongue with tongue rings. Uh, <laughs> All right, PFT underrated accessory. It's so funny because you see a girl with a tongue ring, and every guy's thought is like. That girl gives blowjobs. Yeah, she does. <laughs> she sure does. 
Uh, my underrated accessory is a fanny pack. Yeah, that fanny was packs cool. are they're so practical. I got a fanny pack laying around here somewhere that's got a, a Bluetooth speaker inside of it. Wow! So you can just roll around blasting your own tunes. Oh, there we go. I wear yeah. it like a sling, yeah. dude. I wear it. I, wear, I can wear it like a backpack. I can wear it like a fanny pack. Yeah, I'm you a put big it over fan. whatever shoulder you want. Yeah, you I got can, a lot of items. Yeah, the fanny pack also serves as a belt sometimes when you're wearing a tracksuit. No better combo than a fanny pack and a tracksuit. Nice. Also, a great place to put your drugs. It is. That's kind of why I got the fucking fanny pack. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dang. So you, since he took mine, I'm going to go with cargo shorts as, uh, <laughs> as underrated. Uh-huh. Because at the, my, my thing was regular pants and regular shorts, like, they're not meant for you to have stuff really in your pocket and so since he took fanny pack i was saying having a fanny pack and if you don't feel cool with it you can just kind of like turn it so it's on top of your butt and you can like pull that off but you can have your wallet in there you can have your pockets free but if you have a cargo pants on you got some extra pockets in there you can you can store some 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 things whatever you need to store your it bands sweat like hell in cargo (laughs) pants Why do you say that? Because of all the extra layering there. Hey, it's all good, oh, man. Yeah, 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 no. But it, they, they, and they have cool ones now, the cargo pants where you can unzip them at the knee, so yeah. you can turn them into shorts really uh-huh. quickly. So I'm, I'm gonna say cargo pants. Okay, I, um, I like that. The only problem I have with, with cargo shorts or cargo pants is, have you ever tried to iron them? <laughs> it you is, just make it worse. You gotta, you gotta, iron cargo you gotta steam them. <laughs> you just gotta leave the pockets alone. The pockets are never gonna get straightened. You just gotta leave them alone. Okay, they'll drive you nuts. I guess I'll go wallet chain. I actually oh. think wallet chains are kind of cool. I think they're coming back. I think when I see a guy with a wallet chain, I'm like, don't fuck with that guy. Like that guy's prepared. You know, um, I, I'm gonna go with the wallet chain. Nice pick. I actually thought about that. You I, did. I'm not. I'm not even gonna yeah. lie. But then I seen. He a, took uh, fanny pack was my. But then pick I seen well. a YouTube of guys in like different countries, pickpocketers, and that that they have wallet, ways around it. That chain don't work. Oh, with really? them. <laughs> <laughs> it don't. In Taiwan. <laughs> yeah, they'll take they'll, they'll take your money and put put that chain and wallet right back in your pocket. Damn. <laughs> you gotta have like three different wallet chains. Yeah. So that people have to guess which one's a real one. Mm-hmm. Like the I'm other ones are connected to, to a taser. <laughs> you chose unwisely. There's a Costco card in this one. Um, All right, two categories left. We got states. Chris, give us an overrated state. Nevada. Nevada. Okay. For a while, they were like, we, we have one national forest. We have one national park. It's hot. Just a bunch of Italians buried in the desert. And uh, we've got gambling. That's the kicker. But now you can gamble anywhere. So Nevada is overrated. There's, there's nothing great about Nevada. Vegas is fun for 12 hours. <laughs> it's getting less and less the older I get. Yeah, and that's why I said 12 hours. I think last year it was 36 hours. And I was but 12. you inched a little bit closer to Vegas. I feel like the rule is the further you have to go, the less time you can spend there. Mm-hmm. You're a little bit closer now in Chicago. I'm definitely not going to be a casual know. Vegas guy. It's, yeah. That's never been like my speed. I'll go to Vegas for, you know what, next time I go, I'm actually more looking forward to just hitting the buffet. Than anything oh, else. Dude, that's Yo, our thing, dude. dude. We go down to the wind buffet the wind and pile buff- it on. Oh, man. We, we should do some buff- have- buffet pods. Yo, should, the yeah. buff- buffet pods, dude. The buffets down there are unbelievable, dude. Yeah. I'll wake up at like 7 in the morning because oh. I'm on East Coast time, and I'll go down there all half drunk, have a buffet, go go back to sleep all yeah. day. I, I like in the steam room in Vegas, too. They got some nice spas out there. Yeah. 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 I'm so washed. Like, I, I, if I go to Vegas, it's like, it, it's not even My there'll favorite- be zero cocaine done. Yeah, no, my favorite yeah. is the hotel room. Seeing the, the hotel room, seeing the what hotel room you're going to have and how nice it is and the buffet is the, the best AC part. AC works. Of it. They're yep. pumping oxygen in there. I can hide. Dr. Fax, when you walk into a hotel room, are you are you like like me where no matter what hotel I'm staying in, it could be a best western in Arizona, I open that door, I take two steps in and I look and go, "Oh, this is nice." <laughs> I am like that. I it could be like the shittiest that. hotel, but it's always, oh, it's pretty nice. Are you yep. like me where you lay on the bed and listen to Mario Lopez do extra? Oh, for like my an God. Hour? Yes. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Extra, <laughs> extra. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, the remote's right over there. <laughs> that is so funny, yo. He is on all that shit. Okay, so, un- wait, overrated states. I'm going to have to go with Washington, D.C. 
There's a problem here. A because it's technicality there. It's technicality because well, it's considered a state, but it's not really a state. It's not considered I don't think a state. It's considered a state. Not, it's not. State. No. It's not. 50 no. states in this Taxation state. without representation. They get on the license plate, which that Ooh. license plate goes hard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then I'm going to go with Montana. Oof. Overrated? Overrated. Are you kidding me? It's my it's my pick. No, bro. I know. No, it's found. Is that is that okay? You've been to the the state. Yeah, and I and I don't see I don't see all the hype. It's hard to breathe there. Um, like it, it like when you're there, everything's so far apart. I remember to get into town from where you live. Fifteen you had, minutes. It, no, it's not. No, it it's, no, it wasn't. We uh, went to the car. Question. We went to the chiropractor. It took ninety minutes to get back into town. Ninety minutes. Like we, yeah, man. Like you have to worry about bears. You have to put these enormous locks on your garbage cans just so bears don't get in. Uh, and I mean, it it just might be a lot. You haven't even gotten to the whites. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah and then <laughs> here's the only thing that sucks about montana is like when they were doing that whole like uh recounting of the election there was this big militant group up there that was uh that had stolen the ballots and it was like 20 minutes from my house <laughs> oh yeah and so you just know you're surrounded by some you know, some crazies some real crazy yeah yeah, that was my, that's my pick though. Okay, that's fine. No, you know. I mean I had to pick. I mean Dogs my first in Montana. My my first pick got thrown out the window. Okay, that's I thought true. Yeah. I thought DC was and that was, was unfair too. State. Who knew that wasn't the state? <laughs> I did. Has, um, has Montana just become so so underrated that now it's overrated? Oh, I don't know. One of those things. Swing yeah. state. Okay, I think I'm careful. just I think right. I'm just tired of hearing about it. PFT overrated state. Uh, my overrated state is New York. Yeah, mm. New York. <laughs> New York. New York is overrated as fuck. <laughs> Unless you like paying 49% tax and living inside of a shoebox. And the thing that I just realized about New York is you're always within 20 yards of somebody, no matter where you are. If you're, but you're talking about home, New York, you're talking about New York City. As a, as a guy from New York State, you're talking, you, what you're talking about right now is only New York City. So Yeah, there's Syracuse, there's Albany. There's, there's a lot of places, man. Yeah. I can only it's, speak to my experiences, my uh, lived experience. Are you calling my lived experience Montana. incorrect? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 it's not. No, like I'm from New York. I'm from Westchester, New York, and like, everything about New York City is just terrible to me. And Westchester's kind of like D.C. and that it's not really part of New York. It's kind of part of Connecticut. Uh, whatever you want to say, it's just at the end of the day, it's better than Manhattan. And like he's saying, being on top of each other, having a closet as a kitchen. You know, yeah. New, you know, New York City is not real livable when you you start agreeing with all the conservative talking points. <laughs> yeah, you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the truth. Yeah, New York City, no good. <laughs> yeah, I stepped, I, I stepped in human shit five times today. <laughs> yeah, and you're like, well, I did. <laughs> you got a point there. <laughs> yeah. Um. My my underrated state. I got two of them. I hope that's okay. That's okay. Go North Carolina. It. Come oh, yeah. on, raise nice up. State. Yeah. Great, great state. It's got a little bit of everything. You got the you got the mountains out in the west. You got um the ACC tournament in the yeah. middle. Some great <laughs> basketball, a lot of tobacco. Mm -hmm. Beautiful country in in the middle. And then the the barbecue I think is very underrated too. A lot of people don't like the vinegar based uh pork shoulder. I love North Carolina barbecue. And then you got some of the best beaches in the world yeah. on the East Coast of North Carolina. I lived in the Outer Banks for a summer. And, um, man, it's, not, it's nothing like the TV show. I didn't get laid nearly as much. But it's, it's a great place to spend a summer. Did you have a Salt Life sticker or an OBX sticker? The OBX sticker, I, you had to get one of those. I might, I might bring back the OBX stickers. Sure? I don't know if the whole country appreciates how big of a thing – the OBX guy is in like yeah. in the Mid Atlantic. You you get yeah. guys that just live for those two weeks every year that they get to spend on a boat in Kill Devil Hills. They drive down in their jeeps mm -hmm. with their with their "Don't Tread on Me" uh, <laughs> license plates. I'm going down at the end of the month. Yeah, and their Salt Life stickers. Okay, North Carolina and and Utah. I think underrated people people talk shit about Utah. Because of, uh, like they say, it's, you know, Salt Lake City is just a bunch of Mormons. The Utah Jazz stink, et cetera, et cetera. The list goes on. But Mormons are very, very nice people. You know, like to say nothing of their religion, I think for the most part, in my experience, the Mormon people, the Mormon families that I've known have been super nice. And Utah is much more than, than Salt Lake City. You've got some of the most beautiful national parks. That's really the allure to me of Utah. 
I, if I go out there, I'm not going to go to Salt Lake City and spend time there. I'm going to go out, you know, camp, drive a VW bus around for a while, mm-hmm. go see the arches. Mm-hmm. It seems like a very beautiful place to go visit. I've never spent time in Utah, only at the Salt Lake City Airport. So like I, need to do that. I don't think I've ever. Fax, who's your, what's your underrated state? Underrated state, I'm going with, I don't know if they're really underrated, but I'm going to go with Hawaii. Um, I think Maui is one of the best places I've ever been to, like, ever. Mm -hmm. And just me being a beach guy, like, the beaches in Maui and the the water, just waking up and seeing the color of that water. Waking up, taking a couple caps. (laughs) Bro, it's just sitting on the beach. I I took caps and cried on the beach in Maui (laughs) because I had took a little bit too much, Uh too much penis envy. But it was just that I couldn't believe. I was like, yo, this is, I'm looking at the same sun that I'm looking at when I'm in Virginia, Mm. but I'm sitting here on this beach and there's these fucking Finding Nemo turtles, like, crawling out the beach, just chilling, not bothering anybody. And then when you're in the water and you're snorkeling, the it's just a, a whole different world down there. And, like, to be able to see that just right off the water anywhere in, in Maui, like, is, is unbelievable. Yeah, but you're a sponger. <laughs> what does that mean? It means you're not a good surfer, I don't think. Not a good st- surfer? Not a good surfer. I can't oh, go yeah. over to Hawaii as much because they'll call me a howley, <laughs> which is the, the word for a white boy that's coming over there to hit the beach and take, take up real estate. Yeah. Um, okay, I'll go with West Virginia. I think West Virginia is, is uh, ridiculously underrated. I think people think about the wild and wonderful whites of West Virginia, and there are whites, and there is drugs. Uh, but there's also beautiful mountains, clean rivers, New River, the Gauley, uh, all the national forests, all the park space. Geno love- Smith. Geno Smith, Bill Withers, <laughs> uh, Randy Pat Moss. McAfee, Jerry yeah, West. Randy Moss, Jerry West. It's a hotbed for talent, you mm-hmm. know, per capita. I love West Virginia. I do too. Yeah. Uh, put movies in there before sports moments. <laughs> yeah. So I-, I can go first on movies. I think the most underrated movie of all time uh, and this wasn't that hard to figure out. Have Over, you ever seen the Overrated movie? or underrated? Underrated. Have you ever seen the movie Go? PFT? That sounds very familiar. Is so, it involving the mob? No, it's involving a bad drug deal, like a drug deal gone bad. It's like rave era, uh, late teens, early 20-year-old people. Uh, it's an early 90s movie. Uh, the, the cast is like Sarah Polly who I had a huge crush on in high school. Her uh, character in that movie is just this gorgeous gal that, that steals ecstasy and, and sells aspirin at, at these rave parties and gets hit by a car, no spoilers. But Tim- Timothy Oliphant is in there. He's, a, uh, he's a, 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 an ecstasy dealer. Katie Holmes, Jay Moore, Tay Diggs, Melissa McCarthy, Scott Wolf. I mean, like, look at the cast of this movie. It's like who's who before they were all... It's a great movie. It was loved by the like indie film lovers in '99 when it came out. But you would think by now it would be a cult, you know, classic, and it doesn't feel like it's it's risen to that level. And yeah, I love. I've never the even movie. heard of it. I, it's it a sounds, great movie. It sounds like it hits all the right notes, though. It hits all the right notes. You got everybody in there. All right, so we're going in reverse for this one. Facts. You got a underrated movie. Um, Tokyo Drift. Tokyo Drift. Fast and Furious. Tokyo Drift. You think it's underrated? Never yes. seen it. I think I think it's underrated. A lot of people don't like that that particular movie out of the series, but I think the um the the racing scenes in that movie were unreal. Like it starts out like in a parking garage and they're like they're drifting up the parking garage mm-hmm. while they're racing and it's something that for me, just thinking about that, whenever I'm in the garage in a mall or something like that, that has that spinning going up garage, you think about like, yo, like if I punched it in here, would, <laughs> would I be able to drift like they were doing? So uh, I'm going to pick that movie. So that's kind of like, you know, with The Godfather, everybody hates on three, but some people say one's overrated mm-hmm. and three's actually a little bit underrated in my opinion. Uh, I'm not saying that God, The Godfather's overrated, but... All right, PFT, underrated movie. Uh, my underrated movie, I'm going to go with the Adaptation with uh, Nicolas Cage playing mm-hmm. twins of himself. 
<laughs> you've got you've got Brian Cox playing the the screenwriter teacher, the like legend of the game. It's got it's got a little bit of everything in there. It's got like crime. Uh, what's her name? Uh, lady who's nominated every single year for Academy Awards. Um, uh, Meryl Streep. Meryl oh. Streep. Meryl Streep's in it. You get to see Iraq. Mm-hmm. You do? Yeah. I thought you were saying you get to see Iraq. Yeah, it's it, it's a good movie. It's a little bit confusing. It's like one of those Charlie Kaufman movies that he spends probably like five years writing mm-hmm. to to get it down. It's almost like a satirization of screenwriting, which is pretty meta. But if you can get past all that, one of my all time favorite movies. Okay, I'm putting it on my list. Nice pick. I like that one. And then okay. PFT coming back to you for an overrated movie. It's a it's a Pruder film. <laughs> it's uh, it, what? It's all grainy. You can't really see much. It's not. There's no. Uh, there's no real. Yeah. Like structure to it. Why yep. was that guy filming? Why was it the only person who was filming? You can't see anything on the grassy knoll. You can't really see anything that people tell you to be on the lookout for. All the conspiracy theorists out there that are like, "Well, watch the Zapruder film, and it'll mm. answer all your questions." It gives me more questions than it does answers, and then you always get Ravel tweeting it out on the anniversary of JFK getting <laughs> shot in slow motion. And that's a terrible way to wake up in the morning. But JFK <laughs> did do his own stunts. <laughs> he did. Yeah, he did. The original Tom Cruise. Also, he's probably a little <laughs> bit overrated, JFK, because you know uh, the two things that that buy you a ticket to being well liked or like being good looking mm-hmm. and dying early. Um, he hit both of those, and he was this big womanizer, but he couldn't even walk. You know, mm-hmm. he wasn't some macho uh, guy. He wasn't even a, a a real Catholic. I guess he was kind of a Catholic in the way that he was you know, stepping out nonstop. But, yeah, I think JFK is overrated, too. Yeah, we should do president's category next time. Mm-hmm. All right, Nate, you got a overrated movie? Yep, this is easy. Going with Dumb and Dumber. I knew he was going to say Wow. <laughs> <laughs> dumb and Dumber, I feel like. White people are going to be so mad at you. Yeah, you it's every Montana, white guy. like Dumb and Dumber and dogs. <laughs> Yo, Dumb and you Dumber. You scene in the, I in don't. The I don't understand why people think Dumb and Dumber or white people, like, Think Dumb and Dumber is so funny, like I, I don't like, know, but we know the whole movie. I guess That's so, gotta but count for something. It doesn't though. Like it's, I, I don't know. I feel like I can honestly probably watch that movie and like not laugh, like not laugh a lot. Like, okay, like more than like five times. A We're funny get movie. We're stoned and watch Dumb and Dumber on camera, <laughs> and and if you laugh. I don't know, man. That's just that's just my pick. I think okay. it's a little overrated. Okay. Well, I got I got a, a couple here, but I guess I'll I'll choose. Um, uh, let's see. So, is The Departed one of the most overrated movies ever? Because a lot of people say Departed's really overrated. I started watching it the other day, and the first fifteen minutes, it's got all the makings of an overrated movie. Too much plot share. Jack Nicholson. He meets a uh, boy. Um, Matt Damon, and then, you know, man Matt Damon, 10 seconds later, Jack looks the exact same. Uh, you know, it's just, I don't know. It just, they, they butchered Gimme Shelter on the way in. I don't know if it, they, they use it again. I forget the movie, kind of. But, like, Departed, I just wanted to put in a footnote for Departed uh, for conversation's sake. 300 is overrated, wildly overrated. Mm. 300, there's a whole generation of guys like me that saw the movie – Loved the movie, but we didn't know we weren't cool. And then, like, you turn 30-something years old. When's the last time you threw on 300? It's a bad movie. Did you ever try to do the 300 workout? Uh, no. When they put that out? That, that would be an thing? overrated trend. <laughs> but, like, yeah, fuck that movie. It's overrated. I would say Departed is super rewatchable, although it is heavily flawed. Like, Jack Nicholson, is, I don't know what he's doing in that movie. So if it's heavily flawed... Then and it's considered one of the greatest movies of our generation. Then it's probably overrated. Real ones don't consider it to be Marty's like top five. Okay, all right, but some overrated, maybe. Yeah. Do we have time for one last category? Sports moments. Yep. Sports moments. Let's right, finish so this thing. Chris, overrated sports moment. Overrated sports moment. I think I have Bill Buckner. You know, it was Game Six. You know, they had a chance, much like the Bartman thing, where they they had an opportunity to put that game away, and there was an error. And then Bartman fucks up and Moises Alou's like, you know, if Moises Alou doesn't react that way, I don't know if Bartman, right. uh, although I love the whole thing. Like I, I, the sick, sick guy in me loves the Bartman story. Like the Buckner thing, they had a three run lead in game seven. Did you know that? Mm-hmm. So it's game six. He boots the ball. They blew a lead before he booted the ball. And then they, they blow a lead in game seven. 
I think the Bill Buckner thing is kind of is kind of overrated. Uh, w- no, no. Here's the most overrated one: the catch. Really, Mays? No, the catch. Uh, oh, Joe Montana, Clark, and and mm. uh, Dwight Clark. Okay, like look at Dwight Clark and look at how much space there is between <laughs> his cleats and the ground. Okay, like that's not even making Sports Center top ten. Uh, it was a great throw, but it's not a great catch. It should be like the throw, if anything. I don't even think that makes NFL Live Week Eight, you know. Yeah, nowadays. I actually I agree with that. It it just it happened to occur before anything else had been named the catch. You know, besides Willie Mays, I guess you could say in baseball, but like it it is not worthy of the the honorific the catch. Odell yeah. Beckham's one handed catch that that should be the catch. That should be the catch, and you know, evidence of that is Odell his whole career that's followed him in a really good way. Uh, you know, he's been a great, great player, but you know, that catch kind of put him in this category of like an icon. Uh, but yeah. And I feel bad cause we just had Joe Montana on. And if he's listening to the social Joe, it's not about you. It's about Dwight Clark. <laughs> you know, he can barely get off the ground. It was a great throw. It's just kind of overblown. Facts. Overrated sports moments. I'm going to go with Derek Fisher, the point four versus the Spurs in 04. That final winning shot, um, at the end of the day, they, they go on to lose in the championship that year. So, like, that that shot really doesn't doesn't mean anything. Mm-hmm. So, I think it gets hyped up way more than oh, it, that's pretty good. it should. Yeah. But my close my close one also, I don't know if hopefully PFT wasn't going to say this, but the whole JR going the wrong way situation, everyone forgets if um, who was – Say it again? George Hill. George Hill, if he just hits that free throw, they're up one, and none of that mayhem, like, really happens. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Good like, point. I feel like I feel like a lot of people, they get on J.R. Smith about that situation, and it's just like, George Hill is, like, a guy that you would think would be able to hit free throws. Yeah, J.R. Smith's throw. not a guy that you would expect to know how many timeouts there are. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, like, exactly. you know, you need to, we need the adults in the room. <laughs> yeah. Also, didn't they lose that series, like, what, four games to one? What was yeah. it? Four zero. It wasn't even close. Yeah. Four zero. Yeah. So so if they'd won that one game, it, people were like, "Oh, it would have been a different series." Yeah, it would have been different. Been four to one, not four to zero. <laughs> that was the night I'll never forget. That was the very day I think that uh, that that Pusher T dissed Drake. Mm. It was nice. like the craziest day, dude. You had the he, JR memes. You had the the Drake memes. You know what? That that game did more for LeBron James than if they had actually won that game. Yeah. Because right, of the meme ball. that came after, everybody was like, "Oh, look at look at who he has to play with." J.R. Smith's a pretty good player. Yeah, Real he good made player. some big shots over his career. Yeah. but because of that meme, everyone was like, "Oh, when LeBron James won in Cleveland, he had a bunch of nobodies on his team." No, he had mm-hmm. Delhi. All right, he had first yeah, he had Delhi. Delhi. <laughs> he had Delhi. That's right. Big Z. <laughs> well, he didn't win with Big Z. Right. Well done. Overrated sports moment. PFT. I'm going to go with the entire New York Yankees. Yes, <laughs> the, the franchise <laughs> of the New York Yankees. So overrated. Hey, guess how many guess how many World Series they've won since MLB had meaningful drug testing? One. Yeah. They won one World Series since then. Every year it's like, oh, this is the year for the Yankees. No, it's not the year for the Yankees. They're a flawed team. They're a flawed franchise. The whole, we don't put our names on the backs of uniforms. You have to shave your beard. You have to cut your hair if you want to play for us. Uh, they, won, they won the vast majority of, of their 27 rings that they say before mm-hmm. – half the country wasn't allowed to play baseball basically so um yeah it's like if a baseball team was controlled by succession congrats on saying the biggest number and you still lose brilliant brilliant, uh, right? brilliant. Right, last part here underrated sports moment pft uh the gold medal game that the u.s had against finland at the 1980 winter olympics because going into that game we could have finished anywhere between first and fourth place we could have been we could have been out of the running for for the medals. So, yeah, we beat the Soviets, the miracle on ice. That's what everybody talks about. We probably shouldn't have beaten them. I mean, that was a, a great game, great story, fantastic Overrated movie. movie. But Overrated that wasn't the gold speech. medal game. Overrated speech in the movie. Anyways. Yeah, mm. yeah. I think nobody talks about the game against Finland. That was no because we wouldn't really talk about the miracle on ice if we hadn't also won the gold. That's a great pick, Bex. <laughs> Um, underrated sports moments. I'm going to go with the 04 Pistons beating the Lakers for the championship. Um, when the Lakers that year had Shaq, Kobe, Carl Malone, and Gary, Gary Payton. Payton. 
they beat them and like no one I feel like no one ever puts them um in the talk of like greatest team because that was that was a super team man the Pistons, Pistons say, and the Lakers say the, the Pistons Lakers were, were kind of a super team though they, they, I'm not saying they put it together like a super yeah. team all together but like if those three players were playing with each other in today's game who's the that? only thing that's separating that from being like a super team is the one superstar Mm-hmm. But like they were all stars. No, you they, know? they they definitely were. Wallace, Rash- yeah. they had Ben Wallace, Rasheed Wallace. Mm-hmm. They had they had a really good team. But I mean, I don't feel like we talk about that. I a love lot. that moment. Yeah, I love that call. Last pick of the draft. Last pick of the draft. I'm gonna go Jerome Simpson doing a flip Ooh. into the end zone. Oh, okay. Man. Like nobody talks about this. The guy did a flip on purpose into the end zone by landed the pylon, it. landed on his feet, <laughs> landed, and it was it was uh, it was. Uh, it was um, it was an Easter egg, too, yeah, because he was, then he was, he was flipping that work. I was just about to say, he was flipping something else, too, doing a good job about it, too, and the amount he got caught with. So he does, that guy is known for flipping, yeah, for sure. Dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's the only underrated flipper. So yeah. What I, I like I got... about, about that play, too, is he had to flip. Like it, yep, it wasn't yep. just he was doing it for fun or it wasn't that necessary. He wasn't scoring a touchdown if he didn't execute a perfect – front somersault into the end zone. It's not yeah. like Michael Jordan. Actually, I want to add that. Can I do honorable mention for overrated <laughs> yeah. sports play? Yeah. Michael Jordan's layup where he goes in one hand, switches to the other. <laughs> not that yeah. nice of a layup. It happens all the time. He didn't need to switch hands. Mm-hmm. There was no, there was nobody coming to block that shot. No, I agree. I agree. And nowadays you get the inflation of like amazing shots. So, you know, back then it was just a bunch of big white guys and Michael Jordan. That's how I see it. Yeah, the reverse layup also by him is a little bit underrated because you get that. Like Kyrie Irving has done that move and done it better probably a hundred times in his career. Yeah, but we don't talk about him. That's um, okay. Cool. Perfect. Well, that that this has been the underrated overrated draft part one. We'll be back for part two. We got more. Uh, we got more categories that Matt has saved up. So. PFT, I appreciate the time, dude, and uh, enjoy Chicago. Are you putting ketchup on your hot dog? Oh, every oh, single one of them. Yeah, Chicago yes. style. That's how they have they're, it. That's how they. No, it they're gonna they're gonna hate you out there, man. They it's hated the that. Like, I can't believe people eat hot dogs without ketchup. Yeah, that they're, they're but, weird that yeah. way. But you know, custom. New York, yeah. New York pizza, or Chicago pizza. Uh, Chicago pizza is great if you want to not shit for like a week. If you're just trying to pump yourself up, <laughs> you might as well just eat lasagna. I mean, it's uh-huh. good, but it's not pizza. Yeah, that's interesting. Nice. Okay, cool. Well, enjoy Chicago, and we hope to talk to you soon, buddy. All right. Thanks, guys.